Hello everyone and welcome back to the Cyclocross Social Podcast. Today we're going to take a look ahead at the World Cup in Maasmechelen, the, the last minute replacement of Rukve on the calendar. And with me here to do that is Isam. Isam, welcome. Yes, thank you. Before we go and talk about the World Cup in Maasmechelen, as you all know, the World Cup is finally going back to Spain this year. For the first time in over 10 years, Benidorm is going to be the city hosting a Spanish World Cup. We are pleased to announce that we will be working with the organization in Benidorm to promote this event and we have a unique discount code for you which you can use to get 20% off of your tickets. So use the code CXSOCIAL for 20% off of your tickets for the Benidorm World Cup. Over to the World Cup that's taking place this weekend, Maas Mechelen, fourth round of the World Cup for the Elite, second round for all the youth categories. Let's start by taking a look at the men's race. But before we can do that, we need to know something about the course. Isam, what do we know about the course? We know that it's located in Maas Mechelen, but that was obvious. Um, you know, the course is, uh, in a way, I wouldn't use the word boring, but it's it's a, a standard course. We knew that it was around the terrails, and we knew that there was probably going to be some, it was going to be a hilly parkour, there were some speculations on that. But, you know, when I saw the preview video and, a fast, uh, fast-forwarded uh, video of, of the of the course. You know, it seemed to me like it was a quite flat. There were some small hills in it, but it was, you know, I think you um, said it quite well that it is sort of a uh, similar to to Dubendorf, the World Championship that we had there. And I would say it's a bit disappointing in my opinion. I think that um, you know there were some speculation that it might even be some sort of a bearing, uh, so, some sort of race that we don't really have, um, but. You can use your power, and it's 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 quite straightforward. There's not not the most technical course, in my opinion. It can be interesting, I think, with a shower of rain. Then then I think that there's going to be um, it's going to be more straightforward in terms of strength, and also I think technical ability will will will, will be shown a little bit more from the riders. But it's a bit disappointing, to be honest. Yeah, and I need to ruin your hopes of rain because it's going to be 20 degrees this weekend. I don't know what is going on in Belgium and the Netherlands, but we're having 23 degrees on Friday and then 20 degrees on Sunday. And it's November, almost, almost November. Koppenberg marks the beginning of November, of course. But yeah, it will be a fast course. And as you say, it is indeed a lot like Dubendorf. At least to me it has these banks and therefore I think that the course should be perfect for the current leader in the World Cup, Eli Isabit. We saw on Tabor that he was slightly stronger than the rest. I do think that the course is also pretty good for Van der Haar and Zweig. And based on Tabor I tend to say, well, Isabit is going to have the advantage, but I'm going to be cautious in that. We know that Van der Haar has been sick. We know that Zweig has had a packed schedule and probably was finally able to rest a bit after his travel to the States this week. So I'm going to be cautious and maybe a bit optimistic and say that we're going to have an open battle between these three riders here. What do you think? It's a bit difficult for me to to put Van der Haar already next to, to Isabit. I mean, I <laughs> don't ask me why, but I rewatched actually the race from Tabor and when I've looked at it and I see the way Van der Haar really tried to bridge that gap I think that if he reacted a little bit earlier there was a chance for him to to be on the wheel of of, of Iserbeet and we know we've already seen that it's quite hard like a small gap on Tabor is, is quite difficult to be to close and maybe with indeed if the preparation is going to be a little bit better not being ill always works uh, then it's going to be a bit more closer but it's you know the course is is, is is it it's never been ridden on. It's it's definitely something where the riders have to be you know get used to. I think it's it's going to be just in the first couple of laps they will be looking um, more to each other, try the course out, and then after a while you know they will figure out what what's going to happen, and then you know we might actually see a fight between um, these guys. But I think in the end that Iserbeet is the, the the main guy again to to look out for and that might be the one uh, winning again well of course after three out of three wins in the world cup there is no way that we can't say that Isabit is the clear favorite going into the race he deserved that position his team manager Jurgen Mettepenge gave some interviews this week the most remarkable one was with Head Last News in which he basically just bashed everyone except his own riders I'm not 
entirely surprised because we know Matt Penning is a guy who's pretty full of himself. We know that it's his job to make Paul Souser look like the best Belgian team. But just for reference, let me give you some quotes out of the article. He starts off by saying that winning 11 out of 12 TV crosses is something he thinks no ever no other team has ever done before. Then he goes on to talk about how good it is that he lets Van Empel go and that he's letting Zweig go earlier for the sport because else he would have one, two, threes almost every week. He goes in and bashing about Sven Nice. He says, just because you're on a TV show every week doesn't mean you have more race knowledge. We identify talent and make it better. If Pim Ronhaar had stayed with us, I think he would be even better than he is now. And he also bashes Nice for the handling of the arts case and says in the end that ECB doesn't get enough credit and there's too much focus on Wout and Mathieu, which fits perfectly with the way he was tweeting after the 5 year World Cup when he said, media is quiet about the wins of Van Empel and ECB. Bit weird, but it is what it is in the end. There, If you're winning the races, you're in a position where you can make these statements and we can think that it's maybe a bit too much, but... Let's not talk about those statements too much because that shouldn't distract us from the fact that Isabit has indeed been the best. But how do you see it going forward? How should Lars van der Haar and Laura Zweig tackle the race here? What type of race do you expect and what should their game plan be? Because they will also face Michael van Turenhout, the teammate, and potentially even Ryan Kamp at the front. The course should also suit him. Mm, yeah, but I think... If if you look at the the previous races, I think that Van Turnhout kind of showed that he is not on on the on the same level as as Iserbeet, in my opinion. He he is um, I wouldn't say struggling, but he, he definitely lacks a little bit compared to to Iserbeet. So I think for for Sveik especially, it is you know he just needs to keep his cool and maybe you know be as as aggressive in terms of the beginning of the race he, like he was in, in Tabor, but just maybe, you know, try try to compensate it or to be a bit conservative with your energy. I mean, because he was using a lot of energy to to, to bring first Van Turnout back. That was quite quite a big uh, pull from him there. And I think that if he just is a bit more conservative with his energy and make sure that he has some energy left in the last part of the race I think Sveik is definitely dangerous because you know in the United States we have already seen that he's able if he goes into a last lap with with Iserbeet, it's you know he can uh, it can uh, turn around quite quickly and then you know I think that the, the victory for Sveik is, is very close but you know Hermans is definitely also somebody that you should look out for and you know these guys they don't need to wait that long for uh, for Van der Poel and uh, Van Aert to join the party and then it's going to be a different race I think. First, let's talk about the riders that are here instead of focusing on those who come later. You mentioned Quinton Hermans. I don't think that he will be on the podium this race. I expect close racing, group racing. The course, to me, seems very almost easy. But these bankings, they will cause for the groups being stretched out. And the first three, four might ride to the top and then the rest will need to hop off. Or maybe everyone needs to hop off, but... They will be stretched out and then on the second part, which seems flat and not super technical, it will come back together again and eventually the strongest riders will ride away. I was in Woerde yesterday, Quinton Hermans there said in the interview that he still lacks a bit of cross feeling and I think we could see that. In the corners and out of the corners he's not explosive enough and he loses a bit, on the barriers he loses a bit, there will be barriers this weekend again. So I therefore expect him to be up there. But he really needs to hope for the harder races, which we will see in the Koppenberg and at the European Championships in Namur. That's where I really expect him. Those are power courses. We know he has the power, but the cross feeling is missing a bit, as he said himself. Therefore, I think what should Zweig and Van der Haar do? They should try and be at the front of the group, because if you are behind, then one, you are prone to team tactics by Paul Sauser with two or three riders. And besides that, you are eventually going to lose out if you're at the back or in the middle of the pack because there's going to be one time when the front riders pull over, the guy in second makes a mistake, so let's say he's beat leads, and then the rider in second, let's say it's Jens Adams, makes a mistake, then you lose the connection, and it's very hard to close the gap on easy beat with the strength he has. You need to be alert and anticipate on easy beat being strong, so try and stay ahead of him. That's the only way forward for these riders, 
and I think if they don't do that, they will eventually come short to easy beat. Swake does have the advantage that he can normally gamble on a sprint. Finish section is relatively short, but in order to beat easy beat in the sprint, he would need to ride the final lap a bit smarter than we saw in Fayetteville. Let's talk a bit about Joel's new house then. We discussed his move to Boas track in one of our earlier podcasts. He made his season debut in Woerden and also his team debut there at the same time. He ended fifth. What do you think that Joris Nieuwhuis can do in this race, in Maasmechelen, but also in the rest of the season? Yeah, that's, I think that's going to be quite interesting to see the progress that he's going to make over the course of the season. He made a transfer to Baloise and um, I think with... Um, with with nice you you can expect that you will you know you will be sent into the right direction in a way and I think that with uh, with an, with this new team and 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 trying to get the cross feeling uh, back I think a lot is, is is possible for him I think he has still the potential that he had from from a couple of years ago it, he cannot disappear from one moment and. He needs to try and find it back. That's 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 the the mission for him this season, and he can surprise us. I think that you shouldn't really look at him for now in the beginning of the the season. I think it's going to be difficult to um, to try and, and 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 get very good results out out of this. But you never know. I think that for him, it is uh, just the case of trying to to get a feeling in the cross and make sure that you are uh, getting used to to the racing and. I think from there he can just try and build um, back what he what he kind of had already that that talent because of I think with a lot of road racing that he has done the focus was a lot on the road and now he kind of made the decision that um, you know he wants to focus also on the cross and wants to see what he can uh, gain there. He of course also has a very bad starting position. He is 154th on the UCI ranking, so that will definitely mean that he needs to do a lot of overtaking in the early phases of the race, which costs energy, and you already lose the connection with the front runners. There will be 42 participants, so that's something that he's lucky with. He doesn't need to overtake that many riders. If this was the Christmas period, there would be 80 riders lining up here, and then it's just mayhem in the first lap. So, yeah, I think Nieuwhuis on a very good day can come close to a top 10, but then he would need to have a really good day and be very fortunate with his start and everything would need to fall in his place. But I'm definitely looking forward to that. Some other riders, I'm interested to see what Felipe Orts can do. He had a good race in Woerde, ended fourth, of course ended second in Ardoy, but then didn't really have a great race in Tabor. So looking forward to what he can do. Johan Jacobs from Movistar is also racing the race, so I also look forward to that. And then finally, Joshua Dubot is also making his World Cup debut this season. He had a couple of good races last year, but wasn't off to the greatest start in the Coupe de France. So I'm interested to see what the French champion can do. Let's go and talk about the women's race then, Issam. Of course, the European stars of Lucinda Brandt won't be lining up. She's still out after that injury she obtained from a crash in the course reckon of the Tabor World Cup. However, the rainbow stripes are lining up. Mariana Vos racing her second cross of the season, her first World Cup. What do you think the world champion can do? I think that she will be there. She will show show the stripes and, and, and be at the front. It's going to be interesting to see if she's going to have enough to, um, to fight for victory. But I definitely think that for the majority of the race, you will see her at the front and... I think I think it will be interesting to see like how she goes through the parkour and if you can actually see that she's already adjusting to 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 the bike and handling it well. I mean, you can sometimes see that some people are still a bit rusty when they enter the first and second race, and I think that's that's definitely something to to look to look for to see if that is going to be the case with Foss as well, or that is going to be quite an um, you know. Uh, an easy easy going race for her and it's just about the form in, in a way if, if that is going to be there or not but I think you know Wood is quite you know difficult to have a reference to take a reference from that we just have to wait and see what, what's going to come in the, in the Maas Mechelen but I think that um, someone like Vos will always try to to finish uh, on the podium and even go for a victory we saw it last year when she started her season in the Waterloo World Cup straight off from the road bike. She immediately won that first race. Then she had a bit of a slip in Fayetteville, but immediately won 
in Iowa again. So I expect no less this weekend. Yes, we can't really draw conclusions from Woerden. It is a crit race, lots of road in it, not technical, not serious. The course is in no way UCI legal. There are sections that are barely one and a half meters wide when they need to be three meters wide. The barriers, I don't know if there's actually four and a half or four meters between them, as should be the case. So what's going on with Foss there? Second place, some people were looking into it. Did she lose the sprint from Vars? No, there was no sprint. The finish straight was way too short. Fosch opened up the pressure some way halfway through the lap and Foss got done. But Foss was racing with a light on her bike, uh, just a headlight on it. Peterson was racing there. Peterson said she had some fun. Didn't seem too bummed about ending third. I think all three riders on the podium there got a nice fee of start money transferred to their bank account. So they can all be very happy with that, of course. And they got some cheese afterwards. It's really a low-key race, so let's not look into that too much. I'm interested to see how Fem van Empel will tackle the fact that Foss is racing now. They will be teammates, of course, starting January 1st. Maybe we'll see some dynamics of that already, but maybe not. But I am interested to see how Fem van Empel will tackle the race. Does she have the confidence to take on Marianne Foss in a sprint? Or will she, unlike in Tabor, need to take initiative? In that where she was on the back foot the entire race and just sitting back, leaning in, waiting for the final lap to come and then launch an attack in the final quarter of a lap. Will she do the same? What do you think, Isam? Will she do the same as in Tabor and try to take on Foss in the final lap or will Foss maybe scare her a little bit and make her change her game plan? Possibly, yeah. I think definitely when you have more players that, that are able to, to go for a victory, it's always going to be a bit more tricky and... It's not only for for von Empel that that uh, Foss is going to be riding with them. Uh, all the others are also going to face uh, Foss. So you might actually see uh, some sort of a different reaction where the others are also going to try and get rid of Foss because they also know that the sprint with Foss is not going to be working. So <laughs> you never know. You actually might see um, the likes of of, of Peters uh, try to work with with von Empel to get away from Foss. It's um. It's hard to say if Van Empel is then going to be the one trying to get rid of Foss because she doesn't want to sprint with her or, you know, wants to avoid a sprint against uh, Foss. I think that Van Empel is quite confident in, in her abilities and it wouldn't surprise me, you know, like she did in... in she, I think she, she, she trusts her sprint quite well and even if it is Foss, she still thinks that she can be able to beat her and, yeah... You know the race is it's 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 difficult to say if that race is going to be the same as in Tabor. Um, you know we expect it to be fast, but is it really going to be this this group racing in a way where we have a big group in the beginning of the race and then it slowly becomes an elimination race and in the end you have like five or four or three people that that will fight for victory. It's I think that for Van Empel, she will obviously the people will look at her and she's the leader of the World Cup and. That will definitely bring some some pressure and some uh, some eyeballs to her, but I think that in the end, you know, everybody has to deal with Foss, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they will uh, they will deal with that. Well, in Tabor, we saw that when Brandt wasn't there, there was in the first part of the race a bit of a weird situation. Normally, Brandt is the rider that takes on the lead of the race. She takes the initiative, puts up the pressure, or keeps a high pace, and then eventually the well, the survival of the fittest starts. But that wasn't the case. So in the beginning of that race, there was just a bit of looking at each other. Hey, the rider who normally does this isn't there. Pietersen and Van Empel, both young, but both look to be the strongest riders at the moment in absence of Brandt and with Foss not being there before. What will they do? They were looking at each other. This is not a situation we've been in before. Pietersen eventually was the one to take the initiative. Maybe she thinks it cost her, but based on how she raced in Woerde, I don't think so. In Woerde, she was also taking a lot of initiative. Peters is also a rider that races with her heart on her steering wheel, or just her steer. She just goes all out, goes with the feeling, and is not afraid to take that initiative. And for her, I don't think much changes. And the same goes for the riders like Vorst or Betsma. They already knew that they shouldn't go to the finish with Van Empel, and now they just have extra initiative to take control of the race. With Voss there, they know that they have two riders that they need to get rid of if they want to win. And they need to do it somehow. It, to me, seems difficult on this course. I haven't seen any sand which looked to be there on the course map. 
maybe Peters can make a difference on the barriers. I don't know where they will be located because that's not indicated on the course map. But it will be interesting for sure to see how that goes. And I think the same goes here for the men's race. I do expect close combat racing. And it wouldn't surprise me if this goes down to a sprint in the end as well. Why? Simply because the level is so competitive. We can could already see that there was not much difference between Vorst, Van Empel, Pietersen and Fasch, also Betsma included maybe in Tabor. Fasch is looking to be improving her form every week, peaking towards the European Championships. I have a very good feeling about her for Koppenberg. So I think that will make for a very interesting race. In the end, I do expect Foss to win ahead of Van Empel, but I'm definitely looking forward to it with some close combat racing. I think it's interesting that, um, you know, at the moment, the names that we are uh, mentioning that that will be fighting for victory at the moment eh, with uh, Van Empel and, and Pietersen. But we can see that there is some sort of... a. I wouldn't even say a generation, but the the riders from from last year in in you know Vorst and Alvarado two years ago, Betsma was somebody that 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 you always could mention for for race victory. But because you know these youngsters are so capable of having you know they're 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 quite overall they have the ability to 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 get through a race in in different scenarios. I mean, with Van Empel, she's able to to get away, but also have a very good sprint and. It's almost like these 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 other women are are on the second row in a way that, that you know for 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 victory they are fighting for uh, third and fourth and fifth and sixth and there is no shame in that but it's just a very interesting uh, situation right now that the youngsters are taking over and I think to be honest that that might, uh, it's going to be difficult to to get some difference in that I think that. You know, shape will always um, differ in, in over the course of a, of a season, and we will definitely have some sort of a different scenario. But at the end of the day, I think that um, this might be the the future in a way. Yeah, we do mention young riders, but at the same time, we do also, at least I, have a lot of confidence in Mariana Vos, and Lucina Brandt is still up there. So we really see that this generation, in a way, be, in between them, is really being overtaken by the younger generation especially technically but we have to mention Anne-Marie Vorst is having a very good season she ended second in Krijbeke then went to the US she won all the US CX series then she raced in Waterloo fifth place okay then two third places in the World Cup five field Tabor both on the podium she is having a good season and she is taking maximum advantage of the times that Van Empel and Brandt and in Tabor Pietersen went for it. She was the only one able to follow them. And therefore we could see that eventually, both in Fayetteville and in Tabor, she was super close to the win, two and four seconds. So maybe Vorst is going under the radar a bit here and is very quietly being the closest whilst we are still focusing on Alvarado based on the race in Waterloo. Whilst after Waterloo from Alvarado, in all fairness, it hasn't been the same as in Waterloo anymore. Of course, bad luck in Fayetteville, but maybe Worst will be the biggest competitor besides Voss for the two young riders. Maybe Van Androoy can mix in. It should be a good course for her, to be honest, with how fast it is. So I'm definitely looking forward, but I'll still stay with the prediction I just mentioned. Then some more news on the women's side. We had a surprise transfer announcement this morning. Alicia Funk is leaving the Proximus team with immediate effect and moving to the Kozer team. That's quite a surprise. We don't really know the reasoning. It said that it's with agreement of both sides and no real reasons except that she is really happy to join a new team and excited to join a team led by Laura Verdomschot and Ellen van Looy. So that's quite interesting. And Furthermore, this weekend we also have the start of the Super Prestige in Rutherford and then two days after we have the start of the X2O Trophy with the Koppenberg Cross where Pauline Prévost Prévo will also make her season debut and she will be racing the European Championships in Namur as well. Very short on Prévost, Isam. Do you think that she has a shot at becoming European Champion? Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's hard to say because 
in a way it's 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 almost unthinkable that somebody is is going to do the Copenberg and then just jump in the European Championships and 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 be one of the favorites but you know she's in such a flow right now also signing that new contract with Ineos you know it's four four championships already four world championships already uh, on her um, already in the books this season and you know uh, this one uh, this European championship can also be added but you know we have to be realistic i think that it is it's maybe going to be a b- bit more difficult than she thinks and yeah. it's hard to place her some somewhere between what we have right now it's very difficult there is no reference we have seen many many women and men as well that that come from the mountain bike that are very good and then they they go they go in the cyclocross and then it's not really coming together but she's a different kind of of of, of, of rider in a way because we already know that she can do it on on in cyclocross but it's it's going to be interesting she yeah she has a shot for sure and if she starts uh, you always have to take her in consideration as one of the underdogs but i i wouldn't call her a clear favorite um i, I need to see that koppenberg cross and what a race <laughs> to <laughs> to start your 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 cyclocross campaign to go on the koppenberg and straight into probably one of the the races where suffering is is is, is yeah is, is quite quite a tough quite a tough race for sure I mean, it's a difficult race, but maybe it's the best for her to start on the Koppenberg. Yes, we know that it hasn't been her priority to do cross after that world title in 2015. She was also overtrained, then wanted to come back in, I think, 2018, 2017, 18. When, yeah, 2018, I remember seeing her in Valkenburg. She looked very good during the course practice, but the world championships there turned out to be a bit of a fiasco. Then she had another season with an attempt, but had injuries and just wasn't the best. And now she's coming back in a very good flow. But the Koppenberg, it's a course where she should really be able to release her power. It's not that much about technique. We know that the mountain bike technique is there, but doing it on the cross bike is something else. And then the European Championships, the course is something for her. That is probably the course after Beringen that comes closest to a mountain bike course. So I think she will be able to content for a top 10 maybe a top 5 but a win I think it's maybe a bit too much because we do know that Vos, Van Empel, Pietersen, Worst, all the names we just mentioned are in very good form so maybe not for a win especially considering her starting position but a top 10 slash top 5 is definitely not off the table. Isam then our predictions I already gave my women's race prediction I went with Vos, Van Empel and then the third place, I will go for Puck Pietersen. What do you think? Um, I would go for Van Empel, Pietersen, Vos. And then for the men's race? Uh, Iser beats, and then ahead of um, Van der Haar, and then third, Laudensweek. I will change things up a little bit then, and I am going to go with a win for Lars van der Haar, ahead of Eli Iserbiet and Laudensweek. Well, that then rounds it off for this episode of the Cyclocross Social Podcast. Isam, thank you so much for being here today. Yes, thank you for having me. And hopefully uh, after the race, we don't look like fools. <laughs> hopefully. But first, we have the Super Prestige in Rudderford on Saturday. First double weekend coming up. Finally. Cross is finally well and truly back. Double weekend. One day of rest. And then on Tuesday, Koppenberg Cross. Cross is here, guys. See you guys this weekend with a podcast after Rudevoorde and then another one after Maasmechelen. Goodbye.